for the final part of this conversation, I want to move to the topic of uh, internment, which is the, you know, that's a widely known facet of FDR's time. But what you argue is not widely known is how much he actually had to do with that process. Like it, he's kind of portrayed as like, he wasn't quite aware of what was happening or, you know, maybe just not keeping close tabs on it. And it was really the the Department of War that was overseeing that. Um, but bottom line is FDR's administration interned more than 120,000 Japanese Americans. Here's a picture of some of them being loaded onto a train, which was not a good look given what was happening overseas. Uh, talk about the mainstream view of FDR's role in that and why you think it's wrong. Okay. Well, I looked at a lot of history textbooks, and of course, you're not going to find historians that'll say, you, that's great that FDR did that, right? Uh, I, I, you might. They tend to be conservatives. <laughs> Maybe you'll probably find a couple. Yeah, I think Michelle Mulligan wrote a book about it. But Yeah, but, th but that's 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 not common. But what they do do is they, they, they sort of make it like, well, how could he avoid doing it, right? It's they'll quote public opinion polls, which were taken once it was a fait accompli. There were other polls taken earlier, by the way, that didn't show support for the idea. Uh, they'll say things like he was distracted, that he had a lot on his mind. And I strike this strikes me as ironic because this rationalization comes from the very same people who said FDR is a take charge guy who's very well right. informed. And I think he is. He read several There's newspapers a day. He was very well informed. Um, and That's he's a contradictory getting, portrait of somebody to be both take charge and hands off in this it, one aspect. Yeah. And it, it, it's a big deal. And it's regarded as a big deal by key advisors of FDR, like Harold Lickies, who opposed it. But more pertinent than that, his two main law enforcement officers, uh, the attorney general, Francis Biddle, who, again, I have some kind words for I have some negative words, too, but. He really held the dam, kept the dam from breaking in a lot of cases. But Biddle opposes Japanese internment and the people his, you know, people under him oppose it. Uh, J. Edgar Hoover opposes Japanese internment. So FDR yeah. is getting a lot of advice from top people. So it's not like he's being overwhelmed. And there was a poll done by the Office of Facts. Yeah, when, when J. Edgar Hoover is telling you you're going too far, you got to maybe think twice. Uh, yeah, but. I think Hoover... Uh, he didn't want that. He didn't want to run that. He didn't want anything to do with it. Right. That was part of it. It's bureaucratic. So, you know, finally he's like, you appease him by letting the army do it. The FBI stays out of that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Uber is an empire builder, but he's, he's kind of has the attitude. Of, he's not going to bite off more than he can chew as well. Um, and I think he, there's some civil libertarian aspects there. Maybe I wouldn't overstate it, but but there's but there's all this opposition. But there was a poll done by the Office of Facts and Figures, a government agency, and they found that everybody but uh, 16 percent of the population were satisfied with the way the uh, government's policy towards Japanese Americans, which was similar, more or less, to its policy to Germans and Italians. If they were non-citizens, they were being uh, monitored and so forth. Uh, there were internment camps uh, for Japanese, for Germans and Italians, but they were much, much different. They were geared towards uh, non-citizens. They were geared to uh, not to the Japanese camps were everybody of Japanese ancestry who was in the designated area, which is namely the West Coast, where most of them lived. Uh, they are, uh, even if you're in an orphanage, there is a it was, it was said the government said basically if, if the orphan is of Japanese ancestry, they have to be taken to the camps. So yeah. that is very and there was clearly there was clearly some racism at play, too. I mean, you pull some really, uh, you know, horrific comments that FDR was making about Japanese people. And so clearly he had a sort of like racial or ethnic animus to them in particular as well as the the you know fact that J the government of Japan had uh, bombed Pearl Harbor. Yeah, uh, FDR, a little known fact. In fact, I couldn't find these online. You know, at the beginning when I'm doing research, they were taken down. They were somewhere up online. 
Uh, you could find them readily. They may be back. But he wrote op-eds for the uh, Macon Daily Telegraph in the 1920s. And he repeatedly discussed Japanese Americans. And he said, first of all, California's right to prevent them from intermarrying with whites, because that will produce offspring which are not desirable. Uh, Japan is right to deny Japanese immigrants land ownership. You, if you were a Japanese immigrant, you couldn't own land. You Basically, they'd find ways around that, have the children and so forth run it. And, you know, barring immigration, of course. Um, he was, which Uncle Ted had done, right? The gentleman's agreements. He was all, uh, he was very much his views on that, but he would make these really kind of repulsive jokes like uh, Japan was uh, originally inherited by baboons, but then these, I guess, some prostitutes came there and intermarried, and we all know the result. He'd say things like yeah, that yeah. in private. But um, so there's racism there, I think. There's a lack of sensitivity. It goes beyond racism. There's a coldness. And my example of this is everybody and his brother is urging FDR to close the camps by beginning in 1944. You know, who's who? And uh, he's worried about the election. He says, so. yeah, that's and he keeps it there. And that's it, that just removes all defenses. <laughs> I think. Yeah. yeah, I think it's uh, also uh, I want to examine uh, some of the text of the actual executive order because it's kind of uh, interesting and I think Very useful to look at how these things are actually implemented. It never mentions any specific ethnicity. It doesn't mention Japanese people. This part that I, or Japanese Americans, the, the part that I highlighted here says, uh, I being FDR hereby authorize and direct the secretary of war and the military commanders whom he may from time to time designate whenever he or any designated commander deems such action necessary or desirable to prescribe military areas in such places and of such extent as he or the appropriate military commander may determine from which any or all persons may be excluded. Um, I mean, that's the most uh, bureaucratic and also like capacious language. Like you can fit anything inside of that. Uh, like what, what do you think about when you look at the way this order was actually drafted. Yeah, they don't, like you said, they don't mention uh, uh, Japanese Americans, any and all persons who may be excluded. I mean, that's about the, okay, how does that happen? Well, we're not going to tell you, really. So it's, it reminds me a lot of the Constitution's references to slavery. Because slavery is not mentioned in the Constitution, in the original, you know, document. They'll use terms like all other persons and you know, persons. It, it's very similar to that. And I called some lawyers. I called Randy Barnett and others. I said, well, why would he do this? Right. And I couldn't get a good answer. And it only seems to me that it fits in with a kind of deniability, perhaps. And in fact, when the court rules on it, they kind of hook, they, they, it kind of feeds into that. Now, if you want to see specifics in the case of slavery, you go to the slave codes of the states. They're very clear what, who's being talked about. If you look at the actual exclusion orders issued by the military, they use the term persons of ja all persons of Japanese ancestry. So they're very clear in the enforcement orders. But when the original order, it's very open ended. And by the way, worth mentioning that FDR wanted to intern the Japanese in Hawaii as well. He thought that this order, he wrote it in such a way that it would give him authority to do that. And that didn't happen for some complicated reasons, but and yeah. it's it's very disappointing to reflect on the fact that mm -hmm. the Supreme Court, you know, interceded so late and in such a narrow way that it really had no effect. And like, you know, a recurring theme to me in this book is just the kind of tepid resistance overall yeah. to a lot of the extreme overreach and authoritarianism, not only from institutions like the Supreme Court, but from civil liberties group like the ACLU. It's like it comes up time and time again where it's like the ACLU kind of tried, but didn't really do much. What what do you think explains that? Well, let me give you two examples. One big one is Harry Truman. 
He was asked years later, what about internment? He says, I was against it then, and I'm against it now. It's outrageous. He didn't say anything. He was a U.S. senator. The Senate had a debate time. The only one who spoke up was Senator Taft, who said it was the worst written bill he'd ever seen. But he said, due to the conditions on the West Coast, I'm not going to fight it. But everybody, you know, and there were others like that that later said, I was against it. All right. And but they didn't say anything. So uh, I don't know, just just fear. I mean, there's a um, there's a there, there's people are also very worried. This is a little bit different of being associated with the wrong people. And you see this when it comes to the sedition trials. Initially, there's a, this big sedition trial. There's not much criticism. By the end, everybody's against it. But John Flynn says, you know, I don't like this, but do we, you know, it's just not, I don't really like being associated with these people because if I defend them, I'm going to be associated with them. And who wants to take up the cause of these unsavory people? Hey, thanks for watching that clip from our show, Just Asking Questions. You can watch another clip here or the full episode here. And please subscribe to Reason's YouTube channel and the Just Asking Questions podcast feed for notifications when we post new episodes every Thursday.